I owe it to my uncle for my devotion to the ancient world, mainly to a strange and forgotten legend he told me when I was very young, the legend of the ancients. The legend goes that even before man appeared on earth, there existed an imposing city, or maybe hundreds of cities, governed by a primeval ruling race that mysteriously vanished. It's said that the city became submerged in time and forgotten. A mere few of us hold on to the belief that there are still some vestiges left, buried deep underground. The expedition organized by my uncle and Nico over the last few years is finally to depart from Baralok, one of the last villages to the south of the continent, to the unexplored Patagonian woods. Meanwhile, I was in Buenos Aires, following up a clue about the almost forgotten legend, but soon I joined the expedition. I woke up agitated. It was a cold autumn morning, and yet again, this time with even more intensity, I had one of those nightmarish visions. I was surrounded by the books and writings of Adriano Scapelli, a colleague of my uncle's, who'd supposedly found proof of the existence of the old legend. My inquiries as to Scapelli's whereabouts led me to an old boarding house in the neighborhood of San Telmo, where he'd spent his final years. This is my last day. I can't stay here any longer, nor do I wish to. I need to gather the proofs that Mr. Scapelli mentions in his letters and leave as soon as possible in order to join the expedition. According to what I found in his office, Scapelli seems to have dedicated his final days to some kind of anthropological study. Dear Uncle, I'm staying in the next room to where your old university colleague Adriano Scapelli resided. I found this boarding house through a contact at the Science Museum, who told me that after his long research journeys, Mr. Scapelli finally settled in the boarding house of Mr. Nikolai Petrov, renting a room there for years. Sadly, I must communicate that Mr. Scapelli died not a month ago. 
Those few who saw him noticed that he was frail, thin, restless. According to what the owner remembers, he was an especially hermetic person, and in recent months when it became clear his sanity was slipping, he barely left the room. Mr. Petrov is a good man, a few words, and strict regarding the access to Scapelli's goods. He's a Russian immigrant, a decorated veteran of the Great War, and full of anecdotes I'm sure you'll be interested to hear. I've been able to find a number of books and writings of Mr. Scapelli's in his office at the museum. I compiled my analysis on the data that could be useful for our research and enclose in this letter. I need access to Mr. Scapelli's room to get more information, including the device that he wanted to give you, but it's condemned. Reparations had been initiated shortly after his death, but just a few days later they were put on hold under a bizarre police order. The order decrees that all items in the room remain untouched. No explanation was offered. So far, my attempts to make Mr. Petrov understand how important the findings could be for our research have been futile. He's currently with other occupations, and he's stalling my numerous requests. I hope to find another solution to this problem as soon as possible. A warm greeting from Buenos Aires, Thomas. Mr. Farrell, during your absence your uncle called. I left a message on the table under the phone. As for the access to- I'm sorry, but I remember- I'm sorry, but I remember we should wait until police investigations are complete. Well, I'm sorry, but I must continue my work. I have a lot of backlog. Have you been thinking about it? W will you let me enter the room? Mr. Scapelli possessed valuable information. He was going to give me an item that he found on his expedition that could shed some light into our research. I understand your intentions, Mr. Farrell, but the police order I received clearly says I shouldn't let anybody get into the room. But maybe I could persuade the officer on his next visit. Has anyone else asked for Mr. Scapelli? Just the local policeman. He arrived a few days after. By then, I had not been able to contact any family member to tell them the news, or arrange for the collection of the possessions. He is a person of few words, 
asked me some questions and immediately went into the room. Could you tell me how the inspection turned out? Do you think he found something of interest? After I told him what had happened, he entered the room. He seemed to be looking for something in particular, but I did not want to interfere. I left him alone for a while and then he came to the reception with some old tattered books. They seemed to be written in archaic languages. Most strange. However, he did not seem to have found what he was looking for. He asked me if anyone else had been there, and then left. I have not heard from him again. Is there anything else you can tell me about Adriano Scapelli? In his letters he comes across as worried and scared. During his last days, only a few times I saw him leave his room in the day. But at night he used to often visit the basement, especially after he acquired a particular item. He was fascinated by it. Sometimes I could hear him whispering, but they were strange words in languages I couldn't place. I remember one night I found him smoking in the hallway. He looked tense, nervous. I approached him with the intention of seeing how he was, but he just told me he could not sleep. Did you say a basement? That's right. The boarding house has a small basement, which is access from the workshop. It has been years since I used it. Scapelli was one of my best customers, so I decided to lend it to him. He kept there several objects of study and collection. Unfortunately, I do not have the access key. It was in the possession of Mr. Scapelli. What could you tell me about the piece that had Scapelli so interested? The only thing he told me was that it was a very old idol found in the African Congo. I could not say anything more about it. Even I haven't seen it in person. But he was very interested in the study of that piece. 